Hello and welcome to Castles and Legends. Today we are going to go and explore Hampton Court Castle. Not to be confused with Hampton Court Palace, that's down in Surrey. Today we are in Herefordshire. So Hampton Court Castle, the earliest part dates back to about 1427. And this place has the most glorious gardens, so beautiful. So we're going to go explore those too and discover the history of the castle. So what we're waiting for, let's go. Hampton Court Castle Estate was created when two smaller manors merged, Hampton Richard and Hampton Mappanor. Hampton Court Castle in Herefordshire was first built in 1427 and is frequently confused with Hampton Court Palace near London, which was built almost 100 years after Hampton Court Castle. Henry IV began construction at Hampton Court Castle but gifted the estate to Sir Roland Lenthal when he married Margaret Fitzalan. Margaret was his cousin and the daughter of the Earl of Arundel. Sir Roland Lenthal was a royal favourite, having fought for Henry at the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. The Battle of Agincourt also helped Roland to raise the funds necessary to build his grand home. At the battle, Roland managed to round up quite a few wealthy French prisoners, who he brought home and only returned them once a hefty ransom had been paid for each prisoner. Hampton Court Castle did not begin as a castle when Sir Roland Lenthal built a quadrangular manor house in 1427. But after moving in, he found he was having problems with the Welsh coming over the border and needed to make the property more secure. Twelve years later, in 1434, Henry VI granted Sir Roland a license to crenellate and so it was transformed into a castle. We can see here the chapel, which is one of the oldest parts of the castle. It was originally Catholic, but is no longer consecrated. In 1510, Sir Roland's grandson sold Hampton Court Castle to Sir Humphrey Coningsby. In the 17th century, when Mary II and William III took the throne, the current Lord Coningsby was a key supporter and to display his support, he added court to the castle's name in honour of Hampton Court Palace near London. It was during this period that Dutch-style gardens and canals were added to the grounds in order to keep up with the current trend set by King William III and Queen Mary II. The castle remained in the hands of the Coningsby family until 1810, when they sold it to Richard Arkwright, the son of the famous inventor of the same name. Richard's son, John Arkwright, set about completely remodelling the castle in the 1830s and 40s. He brought in Charles Hanbury Tracy, later Lord Sudley, who redesigned the castle using the early Victorian Gothic style and transformed it into much more of a family home, as John and his wife had 12 children to accommodate. They had hoped the work would be completed in around three years, but it actually took 12 years and at a much greater expense than had been anticipated. In 1848, an ornate conservatory was also added, which is now used as a cafe for visitors. The Arkwright family sold Hampton Court Castle in 1912. By now the family's fortunes were gone and the castle had begun to fall into disrepair. Between 1924 and 1972, the estate was the seat of Lord Hereford, who resided at the castle. Shortly after moving in, he sold the chapel's stained glass windows, and when the ceiling of the chapel leaked, he left it unrepaired, until eventually it crashed the floor. Here in the library, you may notice a suspicious looking bookcase. Well, it's actually a secret door, that leads out back into the hall. In the 20th century, much of the original furniture was also sadly sold off. In the 1990s, the castle had an unlikely saviour 
when it was bought by an American millionaire, Robert Van Kompen. He spent five minutes looking around the castle and instantly fell in love with it and bought it. He paid 11 million buying the castle and a further 12 million restoring the castle and gardens to their former glory. But he also left his mark on the castle with some of the interesting furnishings and decorations that he added. Robert sadly died just before he and his family were due to move into the castle and the castle was bought by another family who now run it as a wedding venue, hotel and visitor attraction. The castle was fascinating but the gardens were spectacular. Within Victorian garden walls you find distinct garden areas and water features that are separated by canals, islands and avenues of pleached trees. We have here the Wisteria Arch, dates back at least 150 years, so come on, let's go have a look. The large yew tree maze was so much fun and I will show you around this at the end of the video. The maze is made up of over 1,000 individual yew trees and if you can find your way to the centre then you will not be disappointed with the mock gothic tower that awaits you. The tower has four doors but only one is open so just when you think you have reached your destination you may find you have to retrace your steps and search again but the wonderful views that await you at the top are well worth the effort. Under the tower is an underground passage that leads to a sheltered grotto beside a waterfall that spills into a quiet pool and is surrounded by a beautiful sunken garden. It was so enchanting and tranquil here, this was my favourite part of the gardens. There is something really quite magical about this place, very enchanting, the gardens are just glorious and there's lots of little hidden fun things even for adults as we can see, the maze a lot of fun and the views at the top of that tower are just stunning. The history of the place is very interesting too and it is just, just so beautiful here and quiet. We are in June and during the whole day I think I've only seen about a dozen or so other people. It is a real little hidden gem here. Okay, time to take on the maze. If we find the centre, we will find the tower, which is meant to have the most magnificent views. But if we find the centre, it's apparently quite a tricky maze. So wish us luck and hopefully you'll see us on the other side. No, reverse. Oh, oh, what have we got here? A tower! And the door is closed! There is four doors in the tower. Three are locked and closed. One is open. Okay, let's try again. Oh, oh, what have we got here? An open door! Woohoo! So we've been to the top of the tower. Lovely views. Now we can see if there is another staircase. Looks rather dark. Hmm. It leads to a tunnel which apparently comes out at the sunken garden. Sounds intriguing. We gotta check it out. Okay, here we are in the tunnel. It's a little bit spooky. I wouldn't like to be walking through this at night. Ooh. I can hear running water. What am I going to come out to? Oh, 
almost there. Oh, wow. <gasps> Look at that. That was worth walking through that dark tunnel. How beautiful. So the tunnel came out at the sunken garden and waterfall. What a treat. Just gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching today. I really hope you have enjoyed exploring with us and do hit that like button and subscribe to come on some more adventures. Sadly, I think it's time I have to go home. So I'm gonna have to say bye to the castle. Bye to you guys. And I hope to see you again soon.